www.seancarnavillis.co.ke Kenya's Olympic bound athletes have raised concerns over the unprofessional way in which out-of-competition doping tests were being done in their North Rift residential training camps. Last month, the International Olympic Committee ordered mandatory tests on all of Kenya's Olympics-bound sportsmen and women after concern from both WADA and the IAAF over Kenya's lax testing regime. And subsequently, the government has moved fast and allocated 12 million shillings for the tests that will be carried out on athletics, rugby, weightlifting, judo, boxing and archery teams that will represent Kenya in Rio. Meanwhile, the government and Athletics Kenya have urged Team Kenya athletes not to let recent allegations of doping cloud their preparations for the 2016 Olympics. Sports Cabinet Secretary Dr. Hassan Warriors said unsubstantiated reports aired by German broadcaster ARD and published by the Sunday Times concerning doping in Kenya are meant to dent Kenya's image as a great sporting nation and dampen the spirits of the team. In golf, Rory McIlroy says he has no regrets over his decision not to play at the Rio Olympics because of the Zika virus after Jordan Spieth also withdrew from competing. Here's BBC Sport with more details, starting off with McIlroy's controversial comments. Honestly, I don't think it was as difficult a decision for me as it was for him. I don't feel like I've let the game down at all. I mean, it's not, you know, I didn't get into golf to try and grow the game. I tried to get into golf to win championships and win major championships. And I get where different people come from and different people have different opinions. But I'm, I'm very happy with the decision that I've made and um, you know, I have no regrets about it. And uh, I'll probably watch the Olympics, but I'm not sure golf will be one of the events to watch. Which events will you watch in that case? Um, track and field, swimming, diving, the stuff that, stuff that matters. There was a collective intake of breath in that room when he said it with the, the world's golfing media and much of the sporting media there listening to those words. And you're right, it's incendiary, it's, it's devastating really uh, for the authorities who have campaigned so hard to get golf into the Olympics. It's reignited a debate that frankly should have been done and dusted in 2009. That's when the decision was taken that golf should be an Olympic sport and it should have moved on from there. But uh, Rory McIlroy has put it right back on the agenda and especially when you consider that the the IOC will be looking at all events in 2017 going forward for the games beyond Tokyo. So that means that golf could only be, could potentially only be an Olympic sport in Rio and then in 2020 in Tokyo and then goodbye because those decisions will be based on what happens this summer. Michael Matthews won stage 10 of the Tour de France's Kenyan-born Brit Chris Froome retained the yellow jersey. Here's BBC Sport. 400 metres and it is almost time to launch the sprint. Still in beyond the front. Sagan looks, waits, waits again, looks round once more. It's Van Avramat's going to be the first to launch it. Van Avramat on the right hand side of the road in the red. On the left hand side it is Michael Matthews having to go. He's trying to come around the wheel. He's trying to wait. At the minute it's still Van Avramat at the front. Sagan has nothing left to give but can he come through the middle? 100 metres to go. It's Michael Matthews though who has it. A huge Huge cheer for the Australian! Michael Matthews won a stage of the Tour de France for the first time as the race resumed following the first rest day. After a mounted a start in Andorra, the peloton returned to French territory with a strong breakaway allowed plenty of time to build a lead up the road. Team Sky controlled behind with Chris Froome staying safely in the yellow jersey and the Australian sprinter Matthews finishing off some superb teamwork to beat world champion Petter Sagan in the sprint who took back the green jersey from Mark Cavendish. In football, Celtic suffered arguably the worst defeat in their history when they were humbled 1-0 by Gibraltarian part-timers Lincoln Red Imps in the Champions League second qualifying round. Here's BBC Sport. The reputation is taking a battering tonight. They are fortunate in the respect that they do have a second chance next week when they welcome Lincoln Red Imps to Celtic Park. Uh, you said this is one of their worst results ever. I would say it's the worst result ever. This has probably superseded anything that has gone before. It is that bad for the club. It's that bad for this team. And I think Brendan Rodgers realises the size of the task that he now has here. It's inexplicable to think that Celtic Football Club is having to come back from a deficit in the second leg of a Champions League qualifier against a side from the overseas British territory of Gibraltar. It's quite incredible, it really is. All right, don't forget the Tour de France continues today and it should be an easier day for the contenders as they prepare for the huge climb up to Mont Ventoux tomorrow. Sean Caravillis, the voice of sport.